Hi, this is Lou Pulsford to talk about Space War Games. Talk at some length, and a little bit of this will be repetitious to those who are taking my strategic war game design class. So why do we play Space War Games? Well, 10 mile long spaceships, or even planetoid sized spaceships, or high powered fighters. Space battles are glorious. Blast the enemy or outmaneuver them. Space empires are glorious. Aliens can be fascinating too, and little of this is like anything terrestrial, so we have newness and surprise, which is always good in games. And we like them for all the reasons that we like science fiction. It's also true that for design purposes there are usually fewer constraints in a space war game than in a his historical game. Now my focus and limits talking here is going to be about board and card games and video games, not miniatures, not RPGs, not CCGs, will find that video games have many advantages over board and card games, although I personally prefer the tabletop games. A war is about maneuver and violence, and presumably space war games are also going to be that. Battles are won by slaughter and maneuver. The greater the general, the more he contributes in maneuver, the less in slaughter. And that's Winston Churchill. There's a long history of space war games, going back to Lensman, which was a hex encounter game with a beautiful black background glossy board that has reissued more recently. 4000 AD, which was a British game. Um, you put your ships into warp and kept track of how far they'd gone from where they started, but nobody knew what direction they were going until they came out. Then there was Stellar Conquest, which was a 4X tabletop game, Masters of Orion, especially Masters of Orion 2, which I played a lot, which is, to me, the original quote-unquote 4X video game. Star Force Alpha, Alpha Centauri from SPI, Homeworld, a real-time game, video game, EVE Online, which is still played today, a massively online game, uh, Twilight Imperium, a huge and very long board game, which made the fortunes of Fantasy Flight Games, which is one of the largest tabletop game publishers. Most recently, Sins of a Solar Empire and Galactic Civilization II video games, and lots more. I think that space war games are related to naval war games. So you have space navies, not space forces, and not armies. That's true whether you're talking tactical or strategic. The point of commonality between space war games and naval war games is that enormous machines are the major instruments of outcome. Not men on the ground with their much smaller machines such as tanks and mobile artillery. They don't really count, especially in space. Space navies are virtually the only armed forces service in the future, so the space forces benefit from most of the war effort's economy as compared with terrestrial navies, where the ground and possibly air forces take up so much of the economy. So what's a 4X game as epitomized by Masters of Orion 2? Explore, expand, colonize, exploit, develop the economy, and exterminate the opposition. Those are the four X's. Now typically, especially in video games, you include non-X factors of technology and ship design. There's too much to include all of this in one tabletop game, and those that try end up clunky or overlong at best. Which is more fun? Well, that depends on the players, of course. Some players like the explore and exploit phases, which are characterized by uncertainty in the exploration and then resource management in the exploitation. Some like the expand and exterminate phases. Expand can be very economic, or it can be just an add-on to explore, minor management. Exterminate is the war part of the war game, and it has the most interaction with the other players. And it's the part that I'm most interested in. Of course, you can have space games that are not war games. War games use maneuver and fighting to determine the winner, essentially. P 
peace games, as I call them, are games where the player prospers best during peacetime, for example, by trading and just peacefully developing their economy, but someone is likely to attack some other player who is perceived to be ahead. And those are often point games, so that it's relatively easy to perceive who's ahead. And of course, in a non-war game, there's no armed conflicts. They are often racing games. Within war games, I have three separate uh, categories. We have war games where economics is vital, and those are big, long wars that are economic as well as military. Then we have battle games, which depict a single battle with an order of battle or appearance and no economy to speak of. Then we have conquest games which had little or no connection with reality. Well, can we talk about reality in connection with science fiction? Yes. We can talk about verisimilitude, whether something feels like it could be real. Think of risk, on the other hand. Risk is definitely not real in any way, shape, or form. It's almost abstract, except it is supposed to be depicting war and conquest. Often the conquest games are symmetric rather than asymmetric. Of course, we also have tactical versus strategic, space battle or space empire. This also depends on the number of players. Two players are going to be tactical, grand tactical, or strategy. Grand strategic tends to be more than two players. Strategy can go either way. It's really hard to think of any battle in the real world where there were more than two sides. Maybe one group held back until they saw who was winning. So inevitably, battle games are two-sided. Now you can have partners and so on, but there's still two sides, even if there's more than one player on a side. And of course, space games can go from a single planet to a star system to a star cluster to a galaxy to a galaxy cluster. Now I have to admit, the only multi-galaxy game I've seen is one of my diplomacy variants. Can you combine strategic and tactical in one game? Yes, the problem is it takes a long time to play if you have more than one player. Now it's relatively easy to do in a one player video game because the player is always involved in any battle that he or she sees and there's no delay while the computer players fight one another. But when you have more than two players, one player at least is going to be a spectator when two are fighting a battle. And as there are more players, there's more battles. So it just takes a long time. I have experience of this from a game I call Star Prince, which I designed as a two-player game and playtested as a two-player game for quite a while, years. And then with a group that liked to play multiplayer games, they turned it into a game for up to five players. Well, it took a long time, and I have found ways to cut that down. Uh, I found uh, a way to play partners so that you can have more than two players, but there's still only two sides. But there's no way around the fact that if you have resolution of battles where there is maneuver, not just some abstract calculate it and you're done, then a game for more than two players is going to take a long time. There's no way around it. Do ground forces matter in these games? Well, to my mind, no, despite all the science fiction to the contrary. Because it depends in great war part whether the burnoffs are forbidden by the rules of war. If burnoffs happen, in other words, if worlds are destroyed, then ground forces are mostly pointless. In fact, the only reason to have ground forces is to force the other side to burn off the planet rather than capture it. And I'll talk more about this in part two.